Welcome everyone to our webinar today. My name is Peter Harrer. I will be your presenter and host today. And today's webinar's topic is the compliance with the medical standards, such as like the ISC 62304, the ISO 14971, and the ISC 60605, and the FDA Title 21 CFR Part 11. This is our agenda. So I will briefly introduce first our company, um, and also after that, we will talk about the safety, reliability, and the quality in the medical device development, and which are the relevant medical standards that you have to comply with, and also we'll briefly introduce these standards as well, and how CoBeamer can help to achieve the compliance with the IAC uh, 62304 uh, standard and also the other templates uh, mentioned in the title of today's webinar. And at the end, we will have a live demonstration uh, in which I will show you the core beamer, how you can help you to achieve these uh, compliances. Just a few words about the uh, structure of our webinar. So I will have a short introduction part at the very beginning with some slides, and which will be followed by a live demonstration. And at the end, we will have a question and answer session. And therefore, to, to, for me to be able to answer your questions, I would like to ask you to type in your questions into the questions panel on the right hand side into the go to meeting panel. Also know that the webinar recording will be available soon after the webinar on our homepage on the inkland.com slash webinars. And uh, as we are here right now, I would like also uh, invite you to register for our upcoming webinars. And the next one will be in the topic of the Internet of Things uh, development, how to manage the intertwined life cycles of hardware, software, and, ser and service deployment development. And so we are Inton Software. We were founded in 1998 and headquartered in Stuttgart, Germany. We also have an office in Silicon Valley in California. And uh, we are also in partnership with the Lufthansa Industry Solutions who are also one of our uh, greatest customers. And we have resellers in Korea and Taiwan as well. And we are, Inland Software are the sole developers and providers of the CodeBeamer application lifecycle management solution with the components of the requirements management, software development management, quality assurance and test management, the demand management and the IT operations. In other words, the de DevOps. And in this slide, you see a bunch of our customers. We are affiliated with multiple companies coming from various different industries. As the, today's topic is the medical, we are affiliated with many, many medical companies. Uh, one of our greatest customers from there is the Medtronic. Uh, and also, we, we are affiliated with the automotive, with many automotive uh, companies. And for also for them, we provide uh, templates to help them to comply with their regulatory industry regulatory standards, such as uh, for the medical companies as well. And our solution, our customers are using CodeBeamer for various in, uh, instances in various different sizes. So CodeBeamer is a really scalable tool. Uh, it also can be used by small teams all the way up to where uh, for, for big organizations, big, big scale teams. Uh, such as for the Lufthansa systems where they have more than 5,000 users in their system. And about the uh, compliance with the medical standards, it's uh, especially impo important for those in the medical device development field and especially for those who have attended one of any of our webinars, medical related webinars, or have read similar posts on our intent box, uh, are aware of the importance of the safety and reliability in the medical devices. Human lives are dependent on these instruments and also product quality is of vital importance in order to ensure the patient safety. However, also on the other hand is protecting these patients is just one side of the story. Investing the time and effort to build the quality medical devices also pays off for the developers, developer company as the medical device recalls, recalls are on the rise. A high percentage of recourse can be attributed to software failures, so making sure the software embedded in the medical devices is up to the standards is more than beneficial for the develop development companies as well. So if that, is, if that wasn't enough, there are also several standards and regulations that stipulate uh, the process and quality requirements the medical device developers have to adhere to. So complying with these regula regulations is a functional as well as a business requirement. And as in certain cases, compliance is mandatory prerequisite for entering the market. 
So let's see m some most of the important uh, standards, how that uh, apply to the development of the medical devices. Uh, so here are a list of uh, various different standards, and I would like to start with the ISC 62304, which is an international standard which is applied both in the European Union and also in the United States. And it specifies the requirement of software lifecycle processes in the development of the medical software and the software embedded in also in the medical devices. It's, uh, it's widely regarded as the most important standard in this field and also in the in industry. And the next one is the ISO 14971 lays out the process for identifying, evaluating and reducing or mitigating the risks associated with the medical devices. And it also contains parts about monitoring and the effectiveness of the risk control measures. The standard applies also to all stages of the development lifecycle, requiring developers to specify, execute, and report on the risk control processes throughout the lifecycle. Uh, also, on the other hand, uh, for on the, the US Food and Drug Administration provides a variety of regulations and standards. Among the most widely applied of these is the CFR Part 11, which covers electronic records and electronic signatures used in, in medical device development. More specifically, the Part 11 regulates the requirements based on which electronic records or electronic signatures are considered reliable and equivalent to wedding signatures. It applies to the management that controls for, for controls, audit trails, system validation, documentation, and electronic signatures of the electronic data that is used to prove the compliance with other FDE regulations as well. And the last one here in this section is the ISC 60601. It is actually a collection of standards rather than one standard, and all of, all of which aim to govern the safety and effectiveness of medical electrical equipment. The ISC 60601 uh, uh, is the first part of the standard is titled General Requirements for Basic Safety and Essential Performance is the section that gives general guidance on the requirements of the standard and it also contains a part uh, section 14 on, on the safety using the medical devices. So, and here this is just uh, after the general overview of the standards, what they are all about. Uh, these standards are also Dif uh, differs in the requirements that they set for the medical device developers, and there are a few common points as well. The following requirements can be considered as, as, as general requirements. Some of these standards, as well as uh, future regulations, may, for instance, explicitly define a specific development process to follow, while others will only stipulate certain safety requirements. In order to adhere to these space safety specifications, and to achieve the compliance, you will need to build your own processes. Either way, the following requirements stand uh, for, for each of them. So the links will need to be established between the requirements and, and all other work items in order to ensure the end-to-end -end traceability. The process visibility needs to be ensured also at all the times. In other words, you will need to be able to present, preferably visualize, the processes that you are using and in which development of uh, software embedded in, in, your, in your medical devices. The high, the high quality and reliability of these processes will also need to be ensured. For instance, you may have to use certain approval procedures or limit access to certain work items. Suitable quality assurance, risk management, and testing processes needs to be used during development to ensure product quality as well. And not only do you have to do all of these, uh, you will also need to prove that your development processes satisfy all requirements. To be able to do this, all changes to your artifacts will need to be recorded, all processes documented thoroughly, and as well as efficient reports pulled and presented conveniently for, all the, uh, for compliance audits. Obviously, it would be extremely difficult to do this once you are through with development. Traceability and transparency need to be ensured on the fly throughout the process of your development. So how does one, one, how one company can do that? Traditionally, the software development has, uh, has relied on simple single point software solutions in the past. Many companies still try to keep track of their requirements using Microsoft Word and Excel. And while these tools 
fit the purpose that they weren't designed for using such complex environments. In fact, most of them weren't even designed for using the software uh, development. So therefore, working with these, uh, work, working with them can be a real struggle for these companies still using those. In, in traditional development systems, providing traceability means enormous amounts of costly manual work as well. Without the right tools, finding information in isolated issue trackers, shared folders, emails, and version control repositories, and showing the complete documented change history of all items is a really difficult task to do. And with, all, with the increasing complexity uh, of the medical devices and the software solutions embedded in them, this is not uh, likely to change as well in the near future. So the application lifecycle management tools such as CodeBeamer were specifically built for, for the use uh, in software development. And what's more, with Inclans Medical ISC 62, a 304 template CodeBeamer can greatly support and facilitate compliance with dimension standards. So let's see quickly an overview of CodeBeamer's relevant features and functions. And uh, after that, you will get the chance to see how it works in practice during our lab demonstration, which will uh, follow after after this short uh, first part of the presentation and the webinar. So there's uh, no need to really go into the details as of now. So an Intense Medical template uh, leverages CodeBeamer's capabilities to ease the weight of compliance on your shoulders, and it offers you pre-configured but flexibly customizable work, work items and workflows, including medical requirements, all stored in one single repository to ensure gapless traceability and also data consistency. All waterfall, agile, or hybrid development methods are supported, and separate development streams can contribute to the same product in release. Any kind of internal processes may be mapped and configured within CodeBeamer with optional logic cards, access control, and also FDA-compliant electronic signatures can be applied. And risk management is also supported by dedicated, flexibly co uh, configurable medical risk trackers, comprehensive FMEA feature set, and also risk, risk, mass, risk metrics diagrams all the way with different kinds of reports. Quality assurance and testing are supported by a highly configur configurable and reusable test sets with parameters as well, if it's necessary, and test execution on various hardware and software configurations and also automated testing with our Jenkins integration. CodeBeamer also offers the documents tracker to store and manage all the documentation of your company with all the full change, uh, full change history on each of them. Custom reports may also be assembled and simply exported. Baselines also allow you to create snapshots of, of your uh, artifacts capturing their state at that point of time and also, this is a primary means for versioning the statuses of the rapidly changing requirement specifications along the process of the evaluation. So we just arrived uh, to the end of uh, our introduction part, and here comes a live demonstration. But before we jump into CodeBeamer, I would like to have some questions to you regarding which tools are you using currently, uh, as I just opened the first question. Uh, which tools are you using to manage your requirements or your uh, work items internally at your organization? Uh, so the options are Microsoft Office, IBM, Jira, or, or HP, or any other tools. All right. Uh, yeah, I see that that's most of you still using Microsoft Office, Word, and Excel to, to manage their uh, requirements. I will just close this uh, question right now. And the next one is, uh, you are looking for a tool to manage your requirements. So what you would like to manage with the new tool you're working for, with your new ALM tool? You would like to manage your requirements, or you would like to manage your testing, your entire development lifecycle, or just for simple agile project, or multiple projects for safe. All right, thank you so much. And here's the last one uh, in this part. What software development methodology do you use currently at your organization? So we are developing using the Agile way or Scrum using Water for V model or a hybrid.
thank you so much. So the, the answer that the first year most of you are using Steel Water for, but also many of you using Steel Hybrid uh, development methodologies as well. So I just close this question right now and uh, jump into CodeBeamer to show you our uh, Inkland medical, Medicals uh, template. And what you can see here, this is the first slide uh, in, on this wiki, wiki page, which provides you an overall description of how the template looks like, how it's built up, what is the uh, structure of this template. Once we scroll down, we get an overview of the regulatory uh, standards that have to uh, be applied in the, uh, in the medical industry, and also a list of which are the main standards that we have to comply with here with the short description. And once I cl uh, click on the uh, next uh, wiki page, also in this wiki page, we have a clear des description of the IAC 62204 uh, standard and highlighted with green which the, uh, in, in which parts the code beamer can help you to achieve the compliance. As you can see, starting from the left-hand side uh, for the part for, for the quality management systems, uh, all the way down to the software developing, development planning and jumping to the right side uh, for the part six, how to establish the software maintenance plan and the analysis of the software contributing to hazardous situations, such as the configuration identification and how to prepare the problem reports. So all of these parts are covered uh, by CodeBeamer. I just zoom back and scroll down where you can see exactly how uh, the code beamer uh, code beamer's template is built up and structured according to the standard so on the left hand side in the first column you see the, ch uh, the relevant chapters coming from the ISA 62304 standard uh, starting with the re general requirements where you can define your general requirements and on the right hand side you see how it's been implemented in code beamer and in which trackers or which items of the of this template will help you to guide you through the compliance processes and uh, also provide you a generic template to start your development uh, and your compliance to this standard. So the first thing I would like to show you is, uh, you can see here we also provide the software development process and uh, this also comes with the description of uh, the main topics of the ISA 62. A three or four standard that uh, which contains the software development plan, how to uh, make the software requirements analysis, the architectural design, uh, and also the detailed design. And uh, it also goes through the implementation verification, the integration, and how to provide the integration, the testing, and all the way uh, down here with the main topics. And this also stands for the ISO 14971. Uh, which is for the assignment of risk management responsibilities, the risk analysis, uh, how to create the risk management file documenting the intended use of the system, and also how you make your residual actions on your risk analysis and the post-production report. So I just jump back into the description of, of our template. I scroll down and I would like to show you the entire uh, system design and the development reference, how it's uh, being implemented in this template to help you through uh, your development. So the first thing uh, st in CodeBeamer, as everything is stored in one single system, you can start with your high level requirements. So you can define and collect your customer or market requirements, and then you will be able to derive from those your system and software requirements and also define the architecture of those uh, of those requirements and once you have defined all those artifacts in the system the first uh, first assessment of the theoretical risks uh, can be done and uh, all these risks can be assessed and also uh, we provide you in this template a failure mode and effect analysis uh, which we provide you in various ways so you can define in the system automatically the risk priority numbers the mitigation actions and also the, re the reduction plans and afterwards, uh, you are able to trace everything in, in risk matrix diagrams and also customizable reports. I will get into that later uh, during this demo. And one additional thing, as I already mentioned you, in, as the CodeBeamer is one single point solution, the test management is also included in this template. So you can, from, your, from defining your requirements, you can easily jump to the testing and, uh, and into the implementation of your requirements. So, and also CodeBeamer comes with the uh, compliance regulations uh, specific test, uh, test planning 
and test cases, test sets, and also with the test execution can be done within Code Beamer. So as the maintenance, such as where you can monitor your tasks, bugs, and also your change requests. So right now, I just would like to jump into the system requirements to show you how easy it is to define one specific requirement using Code Beamer and how easily uh, we can set up the, uh, the traceability so as the relations in the tool and how the interface looks like, how you can edit those uh, properties. So I just here right now in, the, in our system requirement tracker and uh, on the left hand side you can see the hierarchical uh, structure of the in the industry structure navigator bar of our requirements also containing folders and our first requirement right now in the system requirements is a wiring requirement and once uh, i'm able to edit here our requirement description on the user interface very easily i will just add a demo webinar change and this is how easily you can edit the uh, the description of your requirements and once you go into the detailed view of your requirements you are also able to visualize and see all the properties listed uh, here in this document you are also able to visualize the connections which, which are the uh, incoming and also the indirectly uh, uh, connected requirements which are uh, which been derived from this requirement. So as you can see, we are making a risk analysis on this specific requirement. So many failure modes are connected to this as of now. And in the, in the uh, section below, you can see under the history tab, the exact uh, history change on the, uh, on the historical order in a timely manner, who made, this, who made these specific changes and what specific point of time. And each changes are versioned in the tool and after that, a baseline can be created each one of these uh, changes. So in this way, we provide the full traceability. So as uh, we provide the traceability for the entire lifecycle using the traceability browser, I also show you that how it looks like. So I just went uh, to the overview of our trackers where you can visualize all the work items so as the configuration items which are defined in this tracker, and I would like to click on the traceability browser now to walk through the entire life cycle down to the operational level. And therefore, I would like to start from, a, from the customer requirements. And then I would like to visualize the system requirements. And to the system requirements, I would like to see all the rated software requirements. And from the software requirements, let's say, uh, I would like to see the architecture itself. And this also works as uh, a gap analysis. So you can see all your customer requirements and that they are defined as new and currently they don't have any, any uh, connected system requirements. But once I scroll down, I'm also able to see that, for example, I can walk through the entire life cycle that uh, to this specific customer requirements, this interface to hospital control systems have defined uh, also system requirements and if I just uh, go to the right, I also see the related software requirements. And also we have some software requirements which have connected architecture, ar defined architecture as well. And uh, all these views, all these traceability views, all these gap analysis can be exported into Excel. I will show you how it looks like. So you just simply have to click on uh, the export to office like make, making an Excel export. And all this traceability browser now being exported, which contains the direct links back to the system. And this way you are also able to visualize and monitor your execution of, of your entire life cycle. So you can see in the first column your customer requirements with, with their actual statuses. And going to the right side, you see the system requirements, so as the software requirements and also the architecture. And this is how easily you can export and provide the compliance documentation from CodeBeamer, so you can walk down the entire lifecycle with ease. And just close this one and go back to our standard description, because there's also there's a point related to how to uh, create your and uh, create your general requirements. There's a point uh, in the first, first, uh, first section 
is the safety, uh, software safety classification, which is being implemented in the architecture in the Code Beamer. I just open this uh, up in another window. And in an architecture, I just go into one specific architecture uh, artifact. And once I go into this uh, infusion pumping system architecture, uh, I'm also able to see the software safety classification, which, which is uh, level C right now. Here you can also able to define the acceptance criteria, additional acceptance criteria. So this way you are able to define the safety classification of your software. Um, so as uh, the next step is the software development process itself, so not just the entire life cycle, we provide you a brief description how you should uh, execute your development, uh, how you should validate, how you should, uh, how you should integrate your, your, uh, your requirements. So therefore we have a briefly described software development plan. And in the software development plan, in the wiki section, we also provide you the processes, a full traceability with the FMEA uh, tra traceability matrices, also the combined risk matrix to mitigate your uh, to mitigate your risks, and also the system design and development reference, which I already showed you for the entire life cycle, which development standards and methods and tools uh, also can be used here. So in the tool. Uh, you got the necessary uh, information regarding the architecture of code beamers. And once we are here, I also would like to jump into the software risk management, which also, also describes you uh, in detail uh, how the software risk management have to have to be managed uh, using this template and also parallel uh, providing the compliance to the standard. So you see here how, how you should, uh, the risk management have to be timed. Uh, so whenever I already showed you and uh, walk you through the entire life cycle. So first you have to define your customer requirements, also the market market needs, uh, and then you are able to derive your system and software requirements and define your architecture and you can define the risks. And we also provide the description of the life cycle of your risk, how those should be managed and uh, the, the workflow that uh, these needs to be go through. Uh, I show you how it looks like uh, in Code Beamer. So I just opened our risk tracker. And in the risk tracker, you can also see all the, all the risks defined in the tool. I just jump into one specific risk into, into this detailed view and show you this, this current status is actually mitigated. But note here that you 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 have to define the hazard and also the trigger, triggering event triggering event which will cause this risk uh, and also the harm that can happen to the uh, to the to the patients and uh, based on the likelihood and severity the system automatically generates the risk number and based on this risk number our risk will be added to the right section of the uh, risk uh, risk matrix diagram and we can. Uh, define whether they are still in the uh, acceptable risk level or they are out of that out of that area. And whenever you plan your risk mitigation actions, you are also able to derive your uh, your system or software requirements that you would like to mitigate this risk with risk by. And once you define those elements, the likelihood uh, after the mitigation and severity mitigation have to be set accordingly and you will have a risk uh, after mitigation number which uh, right now in this case have to be in the acceptable risk uh, risk area and also in the in the uh, below section you can see the references to which uh, which system requirements is it related to uh, so just jump back to this timer mechanism requirement and you can see here, this is how we establish the connection. Uh, so from this requirement, you have a direct link to that risk, uh, which is uh, which have to be mitigated to be able to proceed with this requirement and uh, to the development phase of this requirement. So using Codebeamer is fairly easy to navigate amongst these uh, different type of artifacts. With the traceability browser, we are able to visualize all the connections. And uh, once we have defined the development process, also uh, I can show you how easily uh, it can be connected to the test management. So once we are here in our requirements uh, in the tool, 
I just expand the view for some of our requirements. And here is, for example, one specific uh, requirement is the wiring requirement. And by clicking on this plus, uh, plus, I'm able to generate the risks. So once I generate the risk uh, in, in, in our project, only for this one right now, I just generate the risk uh, related to this specific requirement. I'm just go into this uh, into this test case, and what I see here that in the verifies uh, verifies field, I just establish the connection to our wiring requirement. So this will uh, be shown as a verifying test case for our requirement. And once I go back to our requirements, uh, to the overall requirements, I'm also be able to see the test coverage on those requirements, how they are covered, by, whether they are covered by any test cases or not. So I just zoom in a little bit to show you uh, better. So what you see right now here is the list of our system requirements. And what if they have any related uh, test cases, they will appear like this. And in the coverage, you will see whether they are covered by any test cases or not. And if, they, if you run your test execution on those artifacts, uh, what was the actual results, whether your uh, complete text execution of your requirements are failed. And what you can see here, actually, this is a folder of your automatic control flow, and the, which contains various different uh, requirements with different test cases. And uh, whenever one test case for one specific requirement is failed and the other one in the folder is uh, passed, the overall test coverage will be also failed. So in this way, uh, you can monitor and also have a great overview of your test execution. And this way we provide you the right, uh, the right information to achieve the highest quality available. And uh, also I would like to just jump back to the uh, standard description because I would like to walk you through the entire process according to the standard documentation. So we just talked about the architecture, how it's been defined uh, and the next thing is also the uh, test execution can be run also for, for unit testing, can also uh, run for, uh, for unit verification, and this is defined in the software development plan, uh, and where, where, where also in this documentation you will see all of those, uh, what, what you need for testing for the software for the unit testing description, how you can run your unit testing, your integration testing, and also how you can proceed using our uh, compliant equivalent test plan, test cases, test sets, and also the test execution in the tool. And what I didn't show you so far is the traceability uh, features. The custom reports are implemented in, in, in the code Beamer's template. And that is in the traceability. Here we have the FMEA traceability matrix. So you are also managed to run the uh, failure mode and hazard analysis in the tool. And there are some hard-coded traceability matrices to walk you through whether these uh, failure, failure modes are, are uh, planned and mitigated. And also you can see here the connected software requirements so as the test cases. And also once I sh scroll down, you will also be able to visualize uh, the risk matrices that I previously mentioned. Uh, so this is the before mitigation matrix where you can see different risks. Once I click on that, uh, you see the, the risk itself, how they look like. So this, these are your requirements or user stories and these are the connected risks to those. So as uh, in the after mitigation matrix, where you can see the after mitigation matrix that you made your text execution uh, and also the mitigation on those. And uh, once you mitigated those risks, uh, they are assigned to the other part of the risk mitigation matrix. And once you click on the numbers in the uh, requirements, you can also go directly to your failure modes. And these are in the structure a bit different than the risk artifacts in the tool. So you can see here all the uh, all the necessary information that, for example, this, fa this failure mode is in the status uh, actions taken. You can see here from which requirement is being derived from. Uh, you can see the failure occurs mode and the failure effects. And also based on the severity, occurrence, and detection, 
the system generated risk priority number. And once you have defined your planned actions and also you derived the requirements that uh, with those requirements you would like to mitigate uh, these failure modes, uh, then you have to define severity, occurrence, and detection after the actions taken, and you will get to complete a new risk priority number. And also to to provide you an overview of your uh, of all of your failure modes, we have an exportable uh, worksheet for you in the tool, and which also can be exported. So just to show you, it contains all the necessary information, starting from the summary status, failure facts, and all the severity occurrence and the de detection data, and this can be exported also to Excel, and you can run your, your BI on those, uh, on, on this simple Excel sheet. So I just import my failure modes, and to show you how it looks like. This is where I have the direct links to our failure modes, and in this documentation, we have all the necessary information need for the compliances. So this is how the how you can mitigate your risk and also assess your risks. And uh, one additional thing regarding the traceability, because I previously mentioned you that we can create baselines of the entire project or specific, specifically for different uh, system requirements. So therefore, we got the baselines here. Uh, and so we can generate a different baselines. And we can walk, walk through on these, on these uh, baselines and we can compare them to each other. Therefore, we also got the baselines tab. And in the baselines tab, I would like to compare our first baseline to a completely different and new baseline. I would like to compare those. And this is the tabular overview of how many items being modified, how many being added. And we can also uh, filter for different type of work items in the tool how they've been managed and changed. So once I scroll down, I'm also able to show the differences amongst those artifacts. So these are being added as test sets. But also, for example, regarding the software requirements, I'm also able to visualize these changes. So for example, I just opened up this specific software requirement and I, I'm able to see in the historical order who made what specific uh, changes at one specific point of time. All right, so I just showed you the uh, baselines. And there's also one, one thing left that I would like to show you and very important, that how you can manage your releases. And this is also covered in the uh, relevant part of the, of the standard, where you have to define your releasing mechanism. And also, so as the maintenance processes with the bugs and change requests. Once I scroll down, and this is how it's been released uh, and specified in the uh, sixth part of the standard, the release modified software system, which can be defined in the release mechanism of scope beamers. So I just jump into the releases, and then this template for demonstration purpose purposes, we have defined different releases. And for example, in the first release, we have defined different sub sprints. And what you see here is the overall information, how many sprints are involved in the, in the first release, how many story points are committed, so you can uh, plan in story points if you are using the Agile methodology, or if you are using the waterfall methodology, you can use in hours, uh, in hours as well. And you will have an overview how many items are still uh, to be done, and also how many are already completed. And once you click on, the, on this sprint, for example, this is what you can see here in this uh, statistic, statistical view. In the left-hand side, you see all the items are involved in the specific sprint. And once I scroll down, I have to see some, some of them are highlighted with green, so are they, they are already implemented. And the others are still in the status new or draft or, or still in progress, so uh, they are not resolved yet. Also on the right hand side, we see a burnout chart and all the members are involved and also we can uh, filter on the, on the users uh, that now I just filtered for my profile and I only see those artifacts that I currently assigned to as a user. And also we have other filtering options here uh, to filter by priority, type or statuses. 
and uh, using Core Beamer, it's very easy to plan your releases. And this is our release planner, where in, this, in the middle section you can see all the items are involved in this specific sprint. Uh, also, from the project backlog, uh, you can you have access to all the all the artifacts which are not assigned and planned to be released. Uh, so this way, uh, we provide uh, the continuous integration as well and the continuous development, so you can easily can reassign all these artifacts. And also, whenever you are in, in your sprint, you can make the assignation fairly easily from here. This is the assignees uh, field, where you can just, using your active directory of your company or your organization, you can search for users, and you can make the assignation like this. Or if you don't want to type in anything into, into the tool, you can just use the drag and drop functionality, and to the right members of the of the uh, of the sprint, you can make the assignation like this very easily. And also, in the meantime, you will have a co current overview of your requirements, so you can uh, specifically see what you are doing. And uh, according to the Lean and Kanban methodology, we provide you the Kanban boards as well. And in the Kanban board, this is for task uh, for task management and also for visualization. And in the visualization, you are also able to see uh, the different type of artifacts, uh, including in your sprint. And you are able to set up different columns for, in this uh, specific example, there's a to-do, in progress, verify, and the done, uh, done columns. And also, you are able to set up working progress limits to monitor all your team's capacities. And this drag and dump functionality also works here very easily based on the based on the unique workflows of your of your uh, artifacts here. So, for example, this is just a simple requirement, and you are able to move it to draft, waiting for approval or rejected. And note here that uh, for the waiting for approval task, the system will generate uh, uh, the approval task, and this is the error message that we received that we first have to uh, define the, all the owners that actually after that they have to sign the documentation to be approved. But I just move another uh, other requirement to the right section and this way you can you are a also able to monitor and visualize your re resolution or execution of your tasks. And one important uh, here you are also able to visualize the individual tasks. So I just added a swim lane for the members and uh, once I, uh, uh, I only would like to see the assigned to individuals. So for example, this is my profile and these are all my tasks that I'm responsible for. And the project manager, we have a clear overview and traceable information of uh, how his team is per, uh, performing. And uh, I haven't mentioned you yet, but uh, Scope Beamer is everything is based on roles and permissions and is a highly customizable tool. And it's a customize, customization of the uh, of the trackers. You are able to define easily the state transitions itself. And once they are connected, you are also able to set up uh, change workflows as well. As you can see in the middle section, this is the workflow for your requirements. And this is uh, also configured for be compliant with the FDA regulations. So this is the approval task that will be generated upon the uh, upon the validation, and uh, these these approval tests uh, in the end will have to be signed by the users with these uh, electronic pass signatures. So, I think this this was all regarding the live demonstration, uh, and I would like to jump back to our presentation slides and. Uh, also would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, before I start the questions answer session, I will also have one last question to you, whether you would like to have further information about CodeBeamer in the future, how you can achieve the compliance using CodeBeamer in the, uh, to the specifically to the regulatory standards, and how we can help you out uh, in the near future. And once I close this question, I will get into the questions panel and try to answer your questions. So thank you for, for your answers. And I will just open up the questions panel and see what are the questions. Um, yeah, we got uh, the first question is, why is the severity reduced after preventive precautions? 
Um, yeah, this is basically connected uh, to how we mitigated the the uh, risks or or even the failure modes. And uh, whenever you made your mitigation action, your your risk, which is likely to happen, is not that severe as it was before the mitigation. I don't know whether it uh, answered the question or not. Okay, here we got an other question. So is there any easy way like drag and drop to create dependencies between the requirements? Yes, yeah, sure it is, it is possible. I jump back into CodeBeam and show you how you can uh, do those easily in the tool. So I will just go back to one specific tracker, for example, to the system requirements. And zoom back. And on the right hand side, we have a requirements library. And from the requirements library, uh, I will set the right project for now. So this is the England, England medical demo. I will expand the view. Here, here I have access to all our requirements. So for example, I would like to specify the connection amongst my uh, software requirements uh, and also to this uh, specific system requirement. Therefore, I would like to use this specific hardware platform requirement. And this way is a drag and drop. And this is where you can specify a link, uh, a link to this uh, requirement, which will create a reference. Or I would like to uh, define a dependency association. Or I can also define a related to association. Right now, I will just specify an associated uh, dependency and this is how it works and can be used with this drag and drop with a few clicks. So I don't see any other questions at this point. Um, so I will wait a few more minutes and uh, after that I will close the session and we'll send out the direct links to recording to you. If you would like to re-watch this presentation. Okay, also once again, I would like to also invite you to our up, to our upcoming uh, webinar and the topic of the uh, Internet of Things development, how to manage the intervened life cycles of hardware software development. So if you, if you are interested, feel free to sign up for that as well. And right now I will just close uh, our webinar today. So I would like to thank you for your attention and also making the time to be here. And I hope we will uh, see each other at the upcoming webinar as well. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs>